That's what this person did. They said five elephants minus two giraffes is three scummy ponds. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> None of this makes sense. Okay. I understand the mistake. You're going too fast. Maybe you don't understand what's being said here. But remember, I'm reminding you, this is five x's minus two ones, and there's just no cleaning that up. There's no three x that comes out of that. I would have to be subtracting x's to one of the three x's. OK, so how do we do this correctly? How do we fix this mistake? Why are we adding 2 to that? Because we're trying to make it a 0 so that it would be some x so you can make that Exactly. We want nothing in here. We want to be, if we're adding something, we're going to be adding 0. OK? If I see a phone, I'm going to send it to phone jail. Been warned. 15. 5x equals 15. Uh, hey, it's gone. Yeah? Cool? <laughs> I saw it. Cool? Um, wouldn't you do the same for the 5? What do you mean? Subtract 5? <laughs> add 2 to 5. No. No, I mean, I see what you're saying. I think I understand what you're saying. Here's the deal. Let's think of it as a number line. It's not 100% correct, but it certainly can help us visualize it. Let's say 5x is way out here, OK? Uh, 5x plus 2, where's 5x plus 2 if this is where 5x is? Well, it's 2 to the right, right? It's, that's not 2, that's 5x plus 2 more. Is that making sense? We don't know where that is. I don't know if that's 75, I don't know if that's 3, I don't know where it is. But I know that 5x, if it's here, plus 2 means I'm going to go right there. Oh, wait, it's on the other side. Wait, what? Uh, oh, five, we had 5x minus 2, so that could be confusing. 5x minus 2. Okay, 5x, if I'm going to subtract 2, it's going to look like that. And again, I don't know how big this is, I don't know what number this is, but I do know that it is 2 less than 5x. Okay, Cole? 5x <laughs> minus 2. Oh, yeah. This is the number 5x minus 2. Okay. Okay? Now, if I add 2 to this, I'm just going to go to the right 2. Where does that put me? Back to 5x. Back to 5x. Yeah. Okay, so to add 2 to 5x minus 2, I don't need to add 2 to 5x. I'm adding 2 to this, mm -hmm. and that looks like just going back to 5x, because 5x minus 2 means 5x, subtract 2 from that. If I add 2 to that number, I just take it back to 5x, okay. right? So no, we wouldn't add 2 to this. Even if we did add 2 to that, what would that mean? It wouldn't be 7x, would it? For the same reason, this is not 3x. No, we don't need to add two. If we added two here and added two there, we'd be adding four. Okay, so for, for all those reasons and more, no, just adding 5x to 5x minus 2 cancels out the minus 2 part of it, and you're just left with 5x. Okay. Okay. So 5x equals 15, and then what would we do? Divide. Divide. Five. 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 Three. Three. X equals three. So much more chatter than is necessary. The chatter that's necessary is zero. Uh, try to have some patience for like plus three chatter or like plus thirteen chatter. So let's chill out with the chatter. Okay, uh, that's a really common mistake that I see. Here's another one. Let me squeeze another one in here. Let's say we had uh, 7x plus, well, especially if it's minus, 7x minus 4. Uh, so let's see, it equals 
31. Okay. So here's something I see a lot as well. taken four from this side, and I have taken four from this side. I have now done it correctly, instead of incorrectly. And you can do anything you want. As long as you do it to both sides, you can do anything you want. But are we any closer to solving this equation than we were to start with? No. No, we still have this other stuff over here with 7x. So how do we actually cancel this out? On the bottom, plus x? Plus x? No, plus 8. Plus 8? Eight. Eight. <laughs> now, negative 8 plus 8, as Cody explained earlier, is 0, so we have nothing there. Or, so not Cody, but uh, Jasper. Equals 35. 35. And now we divide by 7. Negative 5. X is 5. Oh, wow. So <laughs> right either way. Yeah. yeah, either way, we we'll still get the same thing. But the thing that we, that we do wrong is to mean that we subtract 4 from something that's already a minus 4. Minus 4, minus 4 again, we're at negative 8 now. We're trying to get to 0. Oh my gosh, I got that from the right. Miracle. So in the step in blue, what, what mistake does Greta make? I want you to, in your notes, assert what it is that Greta has done wrong. <laughs> Shouldn't have divided by three. Why not? Because it has an x. Because it has an x. Yeah. <laughs> not one. Three x's. No, no. X's. Very mm. well. Okay. It's okay to divide three x by three. No. Let's look at what three x divided by three looks like. I have three x's right here. It doesn't have to be three x. Here's, here are three x's, okay? What does it mean to divide something by three? Put it in three groups. Okay, can I put these three x's in three groups? No. Sure. Yeah. want to. If I put these three x's in three groups, how many x's are in each group? One. One, one. one x. It, these three x's are easy to divide. It's, it's difficult to divide them into like two even groups. Right, then I'd have to cut this one in half and have another half x. But three x's divided into three groups. There's one x in each group. So yeah, you can divide three x by three. Okay? So that's fine. You can divide three x by three. In fact, we divide things, we divide x terms by numbers all the time. We just did it a second ago. Seven x divided by seven. Five x divided by five. Or sorry, it was well, 3x divided by 3, 5x divided by 5. You know, we divide x terms by numbers all the time. So then what's the problem? Um, um, she divided 3 from 3x first before she subtracted 4. Yeah. 4 on both sides. No, is that the wrong this. thing to do? Um, no. Yeah, because you'll end up getting the wrong answer. OK, doing it this way clearly gives us a, how do we know this is the wrong answer? Because if you plug it in for x, it's maybe up here. Yeah, you get 9, nine plus 4 plus is 13, that's yeah, not 21. Okay, so we know that's the wrong answer. So we know something wrong happened here. It doesn't seem to be here. It's in the blue. She's dividing by 3. Okay. It's okay to do anything you want to an equation, as long as you do what? <laughs> do it to both sides. So dividing by th she must be able to divide by 3. or Yeah, she must be able to divide by 3. It must be possible. She must have done it incorrectly. Right? Let's take a, a, pic, a, a look at a, a, a picture of what this looks like, okay? So let's think of it as a, a set of scales. All right, 
On this side, we have 3x uh, plus 4. Okay? So the example we've used has always been these little canisters, right? X's. Okay? So there's three of those. Can we divide that by three? Can we divide this up? Yeah, yeah. we divide it into three groups. We yeah. get one in each group. We can do that. Now, what we also have on this side are four of these. Okay. Now, if I want to look at one third of this side, if I want to divide this side by three, I have to put it into three groups, right? Let's try it. Let's try separating this into three groups. First, I'll put this x into a group. Right? And this x into a group. And this x into a group. <coughs> Please. So I put these x's, these three x's, into three groups, and each group we have one x. But what's left? Four ones. These four ones. They have to, like, they, they make up the left side. So if the whole side is going to be divided by three, then we have to put these into groups too. Right? Yeah. Let's start doing that. We'll put this into this group with this x, and this into this group with this x, and this into this group with this x, but then we have to put this one last thing into three groups. We have to split it into thirds, so I have to take it and split it into thirds. This would go into this group, and this could go into this group, and this one could go into this group. You see the mistake that Greta made now? Yeah. She did not think that she had to divide these four ones into three groups as well. Okay. If she had, though, then it would be correct. Right? Over here, there's 21. Right? Let's say there's 10 there and 10 there. There's one there. Right? And if we split this up into three groups, we split these up into three groups. So how many will have in each group? Ten. One. Twenty-one divided into three groups. Seven. Seven. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And seven in the other group. Seven in the last group. Now we've divided by three on both sides. That was our first step. We've done it correctly. What do we find when we get when we divide both sides by three? On the right side, what do we have when we divide the right side by three? Divide this into three. Divide this. Divide this into three. What do we get? Twenty-one divided by three. Seven, right? In each group, we see the result of the quotient of twelve or twenty-one divided by three. So on this side, we have seven. Okay, that's what's in one group. That's what division can look like. So on this side we have, this is what one of those three groups looks like. What's in that group? Uh, one square. One, so we call that an X. This is what we call one. And one half. That was actually a, a, a third. X plus one and a third equals seven. Now that's correct. But who wants to work that equation? I would not choose to go about it that way. Okay. There's certainly an easier way, and I would suggest that you try that easier way instead. Now this, again, is still correct. It still has the same solution as if you had done it another way. Okay. As long as that way was correct. Okay. I'll write it like this. x plus 4 thirds equals 7, right? So now x plus 4 thirds equals 7. How would you get the x by itself on this side? What's that? Like add out the x. Well, there's just one x plus 4 thirds. Do I want this plus 4 thirds? There's only one x. Okay, one x. What about this four thirds? I'm not sure who it's going to be, but I tell I need somebody to come over here and just like sit right next to me. I don't know what the deal is. And I'm going to 
choose somebody and see if it improves. Or if you just stop altogether, the whispering and the giggling, it's distracting. If you stop, whoever's instigating it, stop. Whoever's giggling, stop. Just stop. How would we no longer have a four thirds here? Subtract what? Four thirds. Is what's four thirds minus four thirds? One. And what's x plus zero? X. Right. So we'll subtract four thirds from this side. How do I take? How do I do seven minus four thirds? Oh. Oh, seven over one. Then? Three. Oh, and then you multiply it, or subtract it. No. You're going to get a common denominator, yeah. <coughs> Times three. So three, 21, and then you get 17 over three. 17 over three. 17 over three. That's the correct solution. Let's find it in a much simpler way, OK? So what should we do instead? What should Greta have done instead? Instead of choosing to divide by 3, because you think it's going to turn out to be x plus 4, which we realize now is not true, we're going to have to divide the 4 into 3 parts as well. What would we do first that would be easier, Matt? Put in minus 4. Minus 4, because 4 minus 4? Zero. 0. So now on the left side, we have 3x plus 0. So we just have 3x. Subtract 4 on the other side, we get 17. Then you divide 3. 17 divided by 3. 17 over 3. It's the same solution. Okay, we, we did everything correctly this time. Can you, can you go back to the Divided by 3, but this is much easier. Just subtract 4 first. So 3x three, three by itself, then divide by 3. Yeah? So if we have a um, uh, like math problem or something like that, and if we got a uh, Mixed number? Uh, yeah, sorry, mixed number. Do whatever you want. Okay. The thing that makes me sad is when I see a decimal when a fraction was just fine. Okay. When I see somebody turn a fraction into a decimal, I see somebody who's scared of fractions. You're intimidated by fractions. So stop doing that so that you can become a little more comfortable with fractions. The longer you avoid fractions, the harder it's going to be when the one day comes you finally realize I should have learned, bothered to learn about fractions. Okay? So let's start today. First step could be don't write fraction answers as decimals. 17 over 3 is a fine answer. If you turn that into 5 and 2 thirds, that's a fine answer. 5.6 repeating shows you that you're scared of fractions. Okay? So relax. Fractions are fine. All right. Somebody hit the lights because it's easier to see what I have up here. Whoa! Oh, it's a Minecraft, bro. It's a Minecraft chest. Yes. Minecraft. Yeah, I do not want people shouting out answers. No one cares how smart you are. They want to learn. Okay. People want to learn for themselves. Uh, so there's a number in this chest. You can see it kind of peeking out there. Okay? If you subtract 24 from this number, you get 18 without shouting it out. I want you to just figure out what that number is. We're starting off simple. Okay? Figure out what that number is and don't shout it out. getting to exactly what the number is, I'm going to ask you some questions about this number. You're going to subtract 24 from it and get 18. So this number, do you think it's compared to 18 and 24? Is it somewhere between those two? Is it bigger than both of them? Is it smaller than both of them? Bigger. It's bigger than both? Way bigger. Way bigger? Okay. Why do you say that? What's how's it, what's your brain reasoning through and saying it must be bigger than both of those? Oh, if you add 24 and 18, you get mm, That's not 
answer. I'm asking why you're thinking it has to be bigger than both of these numbers, Olivia. Take 24 away from it, that's the biggest number. 24 is the biggest number. And you get 18, and that's the biggest number too. So it must be pretty big because you took a fairly big number away from this number and you wound up with a biggish number as well, right? So it must be kind of a big number because we took 24 from the number. Okay, let's look at it this way. Let me write with symbols, math symbols, what this sentence is saying. Here's the number, whatever it is, what are we gonna do to it? Subtract it. Add it. Subtract. Add. Subtract. We're gonna subtract. Add. Subtract. Add. We're gonna subtract. Okay. Subtract 24. 24. You see, I'm subtracting 24 from this number, whatever it is. And what happens? You get 18. You get 18. Okay. Well, this number minus 24 is 18. So to get back up to this number, I would take 18 and what? Add 24. Add 24. Look at this. We're, we're solving an algebraic equation without realizing it. Whoa. This number, right, yeah. minus 24 is 18. So if I add 24 to both sides, I'll get rid of the subtraction by 24, right? I want to cancel that out, so I add 24 to it. So this number must be 42. That's what I got. 42. That's what I got. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to show you another one. I want you to not shout it out. I want you to figure out what that number is. Okay, so we're going to take this number and we're going to do what to it? Subtract 55. Uh -huh. And that is going to get 67. So 67 is equal to this number minus 55. Add 55 both sides. So this results in a zero. And we get 122. 122. I'm so good at this. 122. Yeah. Yeah. Swag. Okay, let's let's add another layer onto this. Okay. All of this, this picture of a box and a box that I can open and see a number inside of it, this sentence that tells me about the number in the box, I can do all that stuff with algebra. Right? Instead of saying there's a number in the box, how can I say that with algebra? There's X, there is X, a number in a box, a number that I don't know. And we are going to do what to this X? Minus the uh, Right, and that's going to be the same as what? 67. Yeah, that's an equation. Like all, this equation is saying all of this stuff. It's saying there's a number, a mystery number. If we subtract 55 from it, we get 67. Okay. Looking at it this way, though, we can think of it just in a common sense way. If that number... I subtract 55 from that number and I get 67. It must be pretty big numbers, but it must be big enough so I can subtract 55 from it and still wind up down to 67, right? So I would add 55 to 67 to get back up to that number. But that common sense can help us make sense of the algebra side of it, where we do the same thing to both sides of the equation. I cancel out the subtraction by 55. I go from 67 up 55 to 122. All right, so this next one, I want you to figure out the number, but I want you to do it by writing an equation that mirrors the sentence here, okay, reflects what the sentence is saying. So write an equation to solve it for this number. So maybe you look at this and you think, why on earth would I bother writing this equation when I could just say this is what the number has to be? Right? This is an argument that you, would have, you and I have had a few times. Let me show you a little graph. Okay. Um, let's put the uh, complexity. Let's say the complexity of the problem we're trying to uh, figure out. Okay, and here is the hassle, the hassle of our approach, like how much of a hassle it is to use a certain approach, okay? Well, if I look at this problem, and I say, well, I add 32 to this number, I get 95, so I must just maybe take 95 and go back 32 to figure out what the number is, right? 
seconds, right? right. A low amount of hassle. It's not, it's not very hard. Okay. So, but the complexity is not very high either, is it? Okay. So, it's a pretty simple problem, and it's not much of trouble to just take and subtract 32. So it's like somewhere in here. Not very difficult, and subtracting 32 from 95 is pretty, pretty simple. Okay. Let's look at the algebra approach. How would we use algebra to write an equation and then solve? What would the equation look like? Olivia? Plus 32 plus 95. And then? Minus 32. Subtract 32 from both sides. X is 63. Now, if I were just a, a, an average workaday American, I didn't really need algebra every day, and that's the truth. You don't need algebra every day. Okay. I just say, I'll just subtract 32 from 95, and done. Right? Got 63. Why bother with all this? This thing right here, well, the complexity is the same, but the, the hassle of the problem is uh, way up here. Right? It's such a hassle to deal with that. Uh, writing an equation and solving it, you're subtracting 32 from both sides and so on and so on. But here's what happens. Just trying to apply common sense to these problems for all problems, no matter how complex, this is what happens. The harder the problem, right, the more difficult the approach of just using common sense. It just goes up like this. The harder, the more complex the problem, the bigger a hassle it is. But here's what happens when you learn to use algebra. It's, it's more difficult for the simpler problems, but for the more complex problems compared to using just common sense, which may just be like way up there, depending on how complex the problem is. It's a little harder at the beginning, but at some point, it starts to kind of level off, okay? I give you a more complex problem, it's only a little bit more difficult to write that equation and solve it, okay? But the common sense approach where you can just say like, well, clearly this is the answer, okay? And I would say somewhere in here is like when the answers are decimals, you put decimals on how complex is this. Once the answer is a decimal, it becomes a whole lot simpler to write an equation and solve it than it would be to just try and say, like, well, okay, let me take this number and cut that and divide and, like, it just becomes a whole lot more of a hassle to not write an equation, okay? So learning to write these equations when it's simple, and I know it's more difficult than this other approach, but it'll become easier later. All right, let's look at this problem. If there's a number in this chest, if you multiply it by five, you get 95. So write an equation and solve that equation. All right, I, don't give you, I didn't give you a lot of time, but if I take the number in this chest and I do what with it? Divide it, or times multiplication. Multiply it five. by five, right? Multiply this number by five, what do I get? 95. Five. So five of these, right, gets me to 95. So what if I just want to know what one of these is worth? How would I solve this equation and find out what one of these is worth? What's that? Divide. I can think oh, yeah, common divide. sense, 95. I would divide that by five to figure out what that number is, right? I multiply by five to get to 95. I'll divide by five to get back down to whatever the number is. Divide this by five. Dividing this by five. And this box here is worth what? 19. 19. 19. So as an equation, it would look like five times x equals 95. Divide by five, and x equals 19. So someone just go ahead and outright give me the equation that we would use to solve what is the problem here? 7x. 7x equals 63. 7 times box, right? Number in the box equals 63. And how do we solve this equation? Divide by 7. Divide by 7. x equals? 
we divide this number by 8, we get 5. Let's write the equation. Uh, x, number the box, divided by 8, equals 5. So this number might, it needs to be kind of a biggish number. Because you can divide it by 8 and wind up at 5. And it's big enough to be divided by 8 and get 5. So, multiply by 8. And x is 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. If you want to know what was in there, you take 12 and you just go backwards, right? Multiply by 4. 48. Now here is kind of the purpose to all this. I want you to be able to see numbers as kind of, or terms as grouped together in this way, okay? So, if you add 23 to the number in this box, you get 48. So let's write this equation. Someone besides Marcus, give me the equation for this. Um, Kelly. 48 minus 23 equals? No. No? It's exactly the way it says it. Ooh, if you add 23 to the number in this box, you get 48. Cody. 23 plus x equals 48. 23 plus x equals 48. Okay. So figure out what number's in this box. How do we do so? Well, we raise 23. X equals 25. Okay, so we go to look and see if we're right. Well, we are right, but it turns out that this 25 is what you get if you multiply the number in this other box, in this box, by 5. If you multiply the number in this box by 5, you get that 25. So. So it's a never-ending, basically repeated problem? No, well, the, the number of this box must be some number, right? Yeah. We, we could go forever. We could. We won't. There is a number inside this box. Why would I write the equation for this? 5x equals 25. 5x equals 25. So all along, instead of using maybe x, we should have used like a, we could use a different number or letter like m. Yeah. It wasn't actually x, it was actually 5 times m, right? Yeah. It was 5 times some other number, m. What I'm trying to get you to see is that if you see this equation, 5m plus 23 equals 48, you're first going to try and figure out what this number is, right? And then it's going to be like, oh, a box inside a box. 5 times some number equals 25. So now how do we figure out what m is? Divide by this number m is 5. Now, if that number m turned out to be some other number, right? Like, oh, that number is uh, when you take this number in this box and add 7. Okay. You can peel the layers back and get within the box, within the box, within the box. But it ends there. That's what it was. It was 5. Okay. Oh, got more. Oh. Someone tell me this equation. Okay. Uh, 13 minus x equals Wait a minute. Subtract 13 from this number. X minus, oh, x minus 13. And since I'm suspicious, I'm just going to write this as a blank spot. Okay. Okay? So minus 13 equals 20. So I'm going to add 13 to both sides. Right? And whatever this thing is, it's equal to 33. Let's see if we're right. Yeah, 33 was correct. It turns out 33 is what you get when you multiply the number in this box by 3. So this must be, like, how could we represent that? Something of 3. Something of 3? No, like no line it'd be multiply 3x. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll break down and actually write 3x. Right? So 3 times, like, you can say something, right? Like yeah. parentheses. We'll just go ahead and say x, because I made these two layers deep. Right? So 3x equals still the whole time. This is 3 times some number. And now to get at the actual number we want, we'll divide.
divide by 3 and our number is 11. Uh, what I'm trying to get you to see here, stop what you're doing now. What I'm trying to get you to see is that this, this is a, a number, it's a number just like x is a number, or y is a number, or m is a number, a variable that you're trying to solve for, right? Solve for that guy first, just to make things easier, and then go one layer deeper. And you can go one layer deeper, one layer deeper, effectively reversing the order of operations. Right? Dealing with this addition and subtraction first, and then dealing with multiplication and division next. Peeling away the layers until we finally arrive at our final answer. 